Can you give it up for the former youth pastor, now the pastor becoming church, Pastors Michael and Katie. Come on, give it up for them. I love you, my friend. So proud of you. Get this mic on. I was so afraid that you guys would hear me singing that I made sure I had this thing turned off (laughs) completely. But my goodness, Dothan first. You guys look amazing. Can you give it up for yourselves today? Oh my goodness, it's so good uh, to see you. It was a different time the last time I saw you. The world was in a different place, but it's so good uh, to be here with you this morning and uh, just to see what God has done here uh, in the city, what he's doing. And yesterday, walking the building and just seeing all the change and all the growth and all the things that God is doing here. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's nothing short of a miracle. It's amazing. And uh, that's, that's all of you, of your prayers and the way you serve and the way you lead, the way you give, the way you show up. So can you just give it up for yourselves this morning? Come on, church. I'm talking about you. You got to give it up for yourselves this morning. And Pastor Mark, you, you stole my thunder. That, that was the story I was thinking about because I do remember that it was a Wednesday night service and I do remember sitting right there and Katie and I, we were attending, uh, we were there that evening and those things, those conversations had just started like with me and I was barely had shared it with her. And when you stopped and paused uh, that night, I was like, okay, Lord, I guess you really are trying to get my attention. And who would have thought uh, that from that moment to this moment today to be able to stand here uh, and and preach for you and Pastor Michelle. Just uh, you guys have meant uh, the world to us. Okay, I'm going to hold back to tears. But you guys have meant the world to us and have been with us every step of of the journey uh, through all the great moments, the weird moments, the question moments, the what are you doing moments. Uh, You guys have been consistent and uh, Katie and I, we just say thank you so much. And so anything uh, that ever happens at the Becoming Church is a direct impact from you and your trust and your love and your leadership and from this congregation. Some of you, which we know, and so many <laughs> in which we don't just because of how much the church has grown. Uh, but we just say thank you for being a part of what's happening uh, in Huntsville. Uh, it's, it's a direct impact from what happened here uh, in Dothan, especially that little girl right there that was born right over there at Flowers. So... Uh, so thankful. And, and my wife, Katie, just uh, she's such a blessing and she puts up with me. And that is a difficult thing to do, uh, because if you know you like, you know, you and I know me. And so it's a difficult thing uh, to do. But man, she's the best. She's amazing. Uh, she does everything with style and grace. She does it in an amazing way. Uh, so good. Uh, so uh, my life is so much better. Uh, because she's a part of it, and I'm thankful uh, for the life that we're getting to live and the life the Lord is allowing us to build uh, together. And just to the whole team, the staff, Pastor Will, Pastor Lindsay, Pastor Hayden, oh my goodness, the Bensons. The, everyone's talking about who is the GOAT. Can we just give it up for the, the greatest of <laughs> Dr. Wayne and Kathy? I could go on and on, but man, just so glad uh, to be here today. And my prayer is uh, that we get a chance, I get a chance to encourage you a little bit and kind of just get you excited about what the Lord uh, is up to and what he's doing. Because here's the thing, if, as Pastor Will said earlier, Lord, if you do it anywhere, would you do it here in Dothan first? Now you can hear that and you can think, oh, like the church, right? Well, the church is not buildings and structure and all those things. It's the church. The building is just a tool. It's something that we use to facilitate ministry and for those things to happen. What church is, it's, it's us. It's so you and I. We're, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if the Lord is doing something in Dothan first, guess what that means? He's doing something in you. And so we have to get this understanding and this realization that the Lord wants to do something in us so that he can do something through us significant here in this city and beyond. So my prayer is that I get to encourage us and stir us into that uh, reality today and to help uh, us do so. I'm going to come from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. And this is my first time preaching since June. Uh, we've had some guest speakers uh, each week uh, back home at the Becoming. So I'm excited today. 
All right, here we go. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 6, 11 through 13. And then I'm going to jump down to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. It's going to be available here on the screens uh, behind me and the Sky Bible screens as well. And uh, 2 Corinthians is going to sound a little different. I'm reading from the message paraphrase, but here's what it says. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives, live openly and expansively. And then Ephesians 3 verse 20 says this, Now to him who is able. Come on, anybody thankful that he's able? That we serve an able God? Not that I may, may be able to do it, perhaps I can do it, but we serve a God who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. And in verse 21, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we're grateful, we're thankful. Thank you for this moment. God, thank you for this time and space that we share together. Lord, we're not here by mistake. We're not here simply because somebody invited us, because we saw uh, the sign outside, because of an invitation on social media, or anything like that. God, we are here because you purpose for us to be here, because you are an intentional God. And so because that's the truth, Lord, that means that there is something specific that you want to say to us. So, Lord, my prayer is that I get out of the way and Holy Spirit, I ask that you do what only you can do. So every word of me, may it fall flat. But, Lord, may the words of you penetrate our hearts for transformation. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this time and space. And it's in your name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Come on, come on. Everybody said? Amen. amen and amen. Family, kids are funny. Kids are funny. I don't know if you have kids, maybe cousins, nieces, nephews, grandkids, but they're funny, especially moms. They're, they're interesting. Maybe that's the word I could use, Pastor Will. They're interesting, but they're funny. They're interesting because you could spend your whole time trying to plan an event or a moment only for them to just be unamused. Oh, that's cute. That's nice. That's awesome. Recently, we took our kids to Atlanta to check out the aquarium. They're all into all that kind of stuff. And so we're like, hey, let's, let's go over to the aquarium. I think it's like the largest in the world or something like that. So we're like, let's go check it out. So we go check it out. You know, there's a lot to just go in to check it out. We don't live in Atlanta. So we have to rent the car. We have to get the Airbnb. Obviously, there's gas driving there. There's all the costs. You're putting up with that crazy Atlanta traffic. Sorry if you're from Atlanta in here. But there's just a lot to get to that moment only for them to collectively ask the question, is that it? <laughs> I wasn't laughing. <laughs> what else is there to do? And I'm like, what do you mean what else is there to do? This is the what else there is to do. Listen, for those of us who follow the way of Jesus' family, I think we are asking that same question. I think we're asking the Lord, is that it? What else is there to do? What else is this Christian life supposed to be? Am I just simply stuck on automatic? Is this what the next 40 years of following Jesus look like? And maybe you're in here this morning and you don't follow the way of Jesus. Well, maybe you're kind of peering in and you're asking the same question. Is that it? Well, today, family, I want to inform some and remind others of this truth that there is more. That you're not just here to simply exist and try to make it through and talk about how you got over. But we are here to thrive. We are here to be vessels used by God for him to do a work in us, to do a work through us. But hear me this morning. We have a role to play in discovering the more of God that exists. So today, for a few moments, I want to speak from this headline, there is more. Can y'all say that with me? There is more. There is more. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, there is more? Okay, now the one that, because that neighbor was kind of shady, try the other one and tell them there is more. Come on. Come on. 
<laughs> so here in this text, Paul is speaking uh, to cr- Christians in Corinth, and he's, he's asking them th- this question, why are you living this small, fenced-in life when there is so much more available to you? And then he says, don't blame me for the smallness that you feel. Because the smallness that you feel is not because of me, but it's because of the way that you have chosen to live. So Paul right here, he is saying, listen, don't blame others for how you feel about your life right now. And instead, see this open and expansive life that God has made available for us to live. But can I tell you, family, I get it. There are a variety of reasons why we may live a small life. Maybe it's our past that we can't get over. Maybe it's our history that we feel is just too messy. And for whatever the reason is, we have chosen to settle right there. But today, I want us to see that while some of us, our life may feel small right now, but there is more. And you may feel like you're boxed in, but hear me, it's time to step outside of the box. That we've been living in the box too long, the box of our pain, the box of our hurt, the box of our disappointment, the box of our insecurities. Listen, the only person that's designed for the box is Jack. So let Jack stay in the box, but you get outside of the box because there is more for your life that God has. So here's what I want to do. I want us to answer this question, how to discover more for your life. And we're going to make some observations around that. And here's the first observation is this. Step out to find out. So if you're taking notes, you can write that down. Step out to find out. Look at this quote from Charles Stanley. It says this, your potential is the sum of all the possibilities God has for your life. I'll say it again. Your potential is the sum of all the possibilities that God has for your life. So we all have this date that we enter this earth and a date that we leave this earth and that dash in the middle right there, family, it's potential. It's the potential that we have while we're here. Now, of course, the question is, well, what will we do with that potential? Will we choose to play it safe or will we choose to take a risk for the Lord? And that's the question at some point or another that we all have to ask. And can I tell you that question does not have an expiration date. Sometimes we may think because of our age, well, I'm young, so I can take all the risk, or I'm older, so I need to play it safe. No, no, no. The Lord calls us to a life of taking a risk. More on that in a moment. But many of us, we have chosen to play it safe. But my question is, is that the lane that God has called you to run in? Has he called you to live in the play it safe lane? Is that the space that he's called you to go? Can I ask you a question? How is that going for you? Do you feel fulfilled? Are you tired of playing it safe? And maybe you're like, I'm just so frustrated. And my response is, could your frustration be directly related to the fact that you're playing it safe? And God is calling you to take a risk. Much like this man named Abram in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 4. Where he says to him, go from your country, leave everything, your people, your father's household. And he says, I will make you into a great nation. And by the time you read verses one through four, you look at all these these statements that he make. I will. I will. I will. I will. And if I'm Abram, I'm like, hold on. I know what I have. I know what I'm sitting in. You're talking about an I will. My kids tell me I will clean my room. I can't bank on that. I know what I see, and that's a messy room. So Abram in this moment is like, I have everything I need. Why would I go off of an I will? In fact, I believe it's eight times the Lord says I will to him. But can I tell you, family, it's easy to trust God when he says, look, here's what all I've done compared to what I will do. So here's a question. Can we move off of an I will? Can we just step out to say, if you step out, I will bless that. 
If you step out, I will move here. If you step over there, I will move there. Can we step out on an I will? I think God is just looking for people with an I will kind of faith that I don't know how this is going to go, but I know who he is. I know he's constant. I know he's consistent. I know he doesn't change. So while though I may be uncertain about this, I'm certain about the consistency of our God. So we've got to be willing to step out on an I will because hear me, the miracle isn't the result. The miracle is the decision to trust him in the process. So we all get excited about, look what the Lord has done. And while that's awesome and we celebrate it, but the real miracle is trusting him in the process. That, Lord, I don't know if my body's going to be healed. I don't know if my child will come back home. I don't know if I would keep this job. It's the miracle in the ability to trust him in The process. Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith and it's filled with men and women who went off of an I will. Because here's and here's what that teaches us, that God will meet us at our point of faith. And can I tell you, everyone talks about you need great faith. You need crazy faith. You don't need crazy faith. All you need is small faith. And God will take that. And small faith don't have to feel like confidence. Can I tell you again, he will, he will take maybe, maybe, I, I think this is God. This looks like him. It sounds like him. I like to call it just breadcrumbs. Just look at the little breadcrumbs. I think this is going to lead to something. And God will meet you right there. Is anybody getting that this morning? So listen, don't miss the more of God because you chose to play it safe. I'd rather say I missed it than say I missed it because I chose to play it safe. And, we, and here's one thing we got to get over. we got to get over, Pastor Mark, the optics. I think for some of us, we become stagnant because of the optics. Well, what if I do that? Ooh, what would they say? What, 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 what if I do that? What, what would they think if I step out and, and, and did that? Ooh, if I shared my faith at work, ooh, what would they say? I, I, might be, I might be called a Bible thumper at that point. Ooh, Pastor Will, I don't know if I can do that. But we have to get over the optics and start moving in the direction of destiny. So here's what our response just simply needs to be. God, where you are is where I want to be. So we need to step out to find out. Here's the second observation is this. Calling does not equal comfort. Calling does not equal comfort. You know, we can't mistake more for comfort. I think sometimes we find ourselves praying these prayers and we think it leads to a place of comfort. And then God answers that prayer and we're like, okay, Lord, I didn't I didn't know it was going to look like this. I know I I pray for this job, but okay, I didn't know they want to work, wanted me to work like this. I was thinking, you know, most salary less to do, but they calling me and texting me and emailing me in the middle of the night. Don't my outer office is on. We can't mistake calling to mean comfort because the more that God is calling us to, can I tell you, it will take you outside of your comfort. Just look at scripture. You can see countless moments that God has called his people to participate in and none of them were comforting situations, but all of them were more. Let's go back to Abram, right? God says, look, forget all you know, move to a place that I will show you. That's crazy. Noah, hey, listen, people are tripping, so I'm going to start over, build an ark for this thing called rain. No one has ever seen it, but, but trust me, it's going to work out. Moses, lead a bunch of complaining people that would rather stay in slavery. Moses like, what? Get in with only 300 men. I'm actually going to take people away, and you're going to take out an army of over 100,000 soldiers. Are you seeing the trend here? More does not make for comfort moments, but it does make for God moments. And so my question to us today is what kind of God moments are we missing out on because we have chosen comfort? Could God be calling us to more? We looked at it. We analyzed it. We saw that it was going to take us out of our comfort zone, and then we backed off. Could we be missing God moments because of that? Family, if you're comfortable, maybe it's your dream and not God's dream. Because God dreams make you feel inadequate I felt that a lot since February 27th, 2022, since the church launched. But that's the place where God wants us to be. You know why? Because it reinforces our reliance on him. That in and of ourselves, we are not enough. 
that if for every moment you think this thing is about you and for you, we are reminded that it's not about us, that it's not for us, but it's about him, it's for him, and what he wants to do through us. Paul said that God allowed this thorn in my side to just exist, that I prayed three times for it to be removed. But yet each time it remains so that I can realize that through my weakness, his grace is sufficient. And I love that Paul tells us that. But I also love that Paul doesn't tell us what the thorn is. Because you know what we would do if we knew? We would compare our thorn to his thorn. What well, Paul weak? What he complaining about? That's all he had to deal with? He didn't have to deal with these kids? Oh, he had to deal with my wife? I mean, not my Jesus. So, if anybody is going up 65 after today, it's just how it came in the notes. There was nothing there, I promise. But we would compare our thorns. But it's not about that. It's about saying, I'm going to forsake my comfort to participate in the miracle that God is bringing me to. You look at Matthew 14, a very famous story here where Jesus calls Peter out of the boat into the water. And there's a a lot that we can see here in this story. One, just look at the boat and what it represented. The boat represented comfort. The boat represented familiarity. The boat represented what was safe. And if we're honest in here this morning, it's easy for us to just say, you know what? I like what feels good. I like comfort. I like what I'm familiar with. I don't, I don't want to learn something new. I don't want to do anything different. I don't know this is, this is good just how it is. There, there is safety right here in this boat. But we all know Peter being Peter, he wasn't going to let that just be enough. So he says to the Lord, well, okay, well, if it's you, Jesus, then, then, then call me out. And Jesus simply says, come. He doesn't say come, Peter, but he says come. So the invitation was to all, but Peter was the only one with enough faith to step outside of the boat. So Peter always gets a bad story, but in that moment, he was the only one with enough faith to say, I'm going to step out. So he steps outside the boat, and he's walking on water until the moment he begins to sink. And Matthew 14, 30 tells us why. It says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Now... Pastor Mark, uh, in, in Huntsville, there's a lot of, you know, engineers and atmospheric science. I don't know if that's a, we, a real term, but it sounds like it could be. A lot of smart people. There's a lot of smart people here in this room. So I need, you, I need, you, I need your help. I don't know this question, this answer, Pastor Will, but how, how do you see wind? It says when he saw the wind, he began to sink. You can't see when. You can only see the effects of it. So here's what this is telling us, that Peter allowed something that wasn't even there to stop him to walking in destiny, to taking the steps of what God called him into. And so my question for us, or what I want to remind us of this morning, is stop allowing imagined dangers to stop you from walking out the call of God for your life. Keep your eyes focused and fixed on Jesus. It doesn't matter what's going on to the left or to the right, but keep your focus, keep your eyes on Jesus. And you know what the imagined dangers are? It's all those optics again. Well, what will they say? What will they do? Here's something that I have discovered. And excuse my English for saying it like this. Ain't nobody thinking about me. <laughs> they not even, they not even, they don't see me. And so most of the time we are conjuring up these things in our mind. No, no, just go. Just take the step of faith and walk into what God has called you to walk into. We need tunnel vision. Faith doesn't come into your comfort. Faith stands in the promise of God and invites you in. So faith does not say, I'm going to meet you right in your comfort. No, faith stands in the promise of God and it invites us in. But it all takes a step. We got to step out to find out. We got to understand that calling does not mean comfort. And so here it is. Jesus has given us an invitation to more and we accept it by stepping out of our comfort knowing that we'll find him right here in the promise. So here's the final observation for us this morning on discovering the more of God. 
And is this truth? The provision comes daily. The provision comes daily. Look at Exodus 16, verse 4. It says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. So here it is. Remember those complaining folks. So they have been complaining. You took us out here. We hungry. DoorDash don't work. We ain't got nothing to eat. And so the Lord says, hey, listen, Moses, I got you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to supply Chick-fil-A minis and Frosted Flakes. I got you. <laughs> but only enough for that day. So you don't, you don't need to store anything else up. You don't need to say, I'm going to keep these for later on. Like, no, just enough for that day. And it leads me to understand this, that when you only have enough for today, you have to believe God for more tomorrow. But can I tell you, that gets tough. Because we're like, well, he may need some help. Because I see on the other side of this, and he, you know, he's, he's everywhere. I get it. But he may have missed around this corner. So let me, let me try to help him out. Sometimes we think God needs help. And so that, so that um, the children of Israel right here, look at Exodus 16, verse 19, says this. Then Moses says to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. However... Verse 20. Don't you love a good however? It's like, uh uh-oh, here we go. Some of them paid no attention to Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we hear what he's saying, but hey, hey, make sure you you keep a little bit to the side. They kept part of it till the morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Family, it's not a, a new phenomenon of trying to of grasp this reality of trusting God daily. That he supplies what we need daily. It's our daily bread. We have to trust him for the next moment. Trust him for the next breath. But yet there are these moments and these times that we think that God needs help. But can I tell you, we always have to trust God for the provision daily. And planting a church teaches you that very well. And I don't have time to go all through the story of, of planting uh, the church because uh, it, it, it certainly was not something that we anticipated in moving back. And it's a story, I guess, at some point we'll, we'll tell, but it, it was amazing how God kind of led us to that moment to start the process of, of sharing about the church in March of 21 and to seeing the church launch Uh, February 27th, 2022, can I tell you, we didn't have a worship team. Lunch Sunday, we had some friends come over and help lead worship. And it was amazing. It was awesome. And it was great. Ah, let's go. And then while all that was happening, I was in service like, it ain't going to be like this next week. (laughs) Because they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. And sure enough, next week, they were gone. And I had some different set of friends. I don't even know. I called them friends, but we barely knew them. Like, she sang, and he, he played, what is that, the, the acoustic. There we go. I don't know music. I'm like, Lord, you called us to this. Help. And it's just been amazing to see what God has done over time. Uh, our worship team uh, released a single. A couple months ago, uh, the church don't even know this. Don't watch, please. Um, But this fall, we'll release an EP of five singles that we're writing ourselves. And just to see that that be a reality where there was no worship team. It has reinforced this reminder that the provision comes daily. And oftentimes we want steps of faith to see the whole path lit up, but it's one foot at a time. And, and I have a couple, I have a picture to kind of show you guys of what it looked like in the early days. Here we are here at Horizon Elementary, just sharing to the team, just a group of people. I don't know, maybe 25 uh, people there. And to just, I think this is a picture a few weeks ago of just what the Lord has done. That's just, I don't, (laughs) 
I almost hesitate to show those pictures because it almost makes it seem like I'm saying, man, look at these people, look at all these folks showing up, and, it, and it's been because of the brilliance of Katie and I. Can I tell you, it's far from it. But what it has been is just, not just two people, because there's been a team of people who have seen a vision and have said, you know what? If God wants to do something in Huntsville and Madison, and he's invited me to be a part of it, let me step out and find out. Let me get out of my comfort to walk in calling. And let me just realize that provision comes daily. And so all this process, all of this has just been trusting God one foot after another. So family, can I tell you, what is that in your life? What is the thing that you've been sitting on? You, for decades, you've, you've kept it quiet. For years, you haven't moved on it because it's been one reason after another. Can I tell you, God wants to use you. He is inviting you to step into the more. And this message, this conversation isn't about all the things that God wants to do in your life, but this is about what God wants to do in you so that he can do something through you. That God puts the giftings and the talent and the abilities in us so that we can reach the world. So maybe you're in business. There's something God wants to do in you in your sphere of influence. Maybe you're in education. There's something that God wants to do through you in your sphere of influence. Maybe you're in healthcare. You see where I'm going here. God wants to do something through you, but you have to have this reality that there is more. There's more to just waking up, going to work, going home, going to sleep. That's not a God kind of life, family. He has called us to more. And so let's use up everything with that dash that's in the middle. Let's leave no potential. In sports, they say leave it all on the court, leave it all on the field. Let's leave it all on the field of life. That when that moment comes, we say, God, I've exhausted everything. I've used up everything that you have given me to advance your kingdom. So don't live offensive in life. Step outside of comfort and be ready for people to tell you all of what you can't do. They've told us that well, you can't start a church on this side of the pandemic that you can't do it in this area. Pastor Mark, can I even go here? They say, you're a black man. She's a white Japanese woman. You can't do it in Alabama. But when you show up at the Becoming, can I tell you, whew, you see black people, you see white people, you see Asian people, you see Hispanic people, because what they underestimated was the power of God that Ephesians 3.20 reminds us that now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power. So what is the thing that they're telling you that you can't do? that you're not educated enough, that you're not smart enough, that you miss your time, you're past your prime. Who told you that? Because that's not what the word says now unto him. That guy from Huntsville was a little excited. No, I'm, I'm just serious about this thing because there are people that they need you. They need what God placed inside of you. That pastors Mark and Michelle, can I tell you, you will reach people that they can't reach that you will reach people that this team can't reach. And the lie that the enemy will want you to believe is that you need to live a small, fenced-in life because you don't have anything to contribute, you don't have anything to say. Can I tell you, that's a lie. That you have a lot to say, you have a lot to offer because God wants you to live this open, expansive life. Amen? Come on, let's pray. Father, we're grateful, we're thankful for this moment. Thank you for this time and space, Lord, that we have shared together. Lord, thank you for this reminder that there is more. That you haven't called us to live this boxed-in, fenced-in life, but yet this open, expansive life. To be used by you. To do a work for you. That will point to you. And you get all the glory. In Jesus' name. Listen, just while we're in this posture of prayer, the first step to discovering the more and living in the more is to discover the person of Jesus. 
And I recognize in here this morning that there are many of us in different walks of life, different phases of our faith. Some of us, we've been walking with the Lord for a while. Now, some of us, this is something that we're kind of investigating and checking out. Can I tell you, more begins with Jesus. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But he came so that we may have life and life abundantly. So he's opening us up to more. He's made more available. But it begins with a yes to following him. What does that mean? It means surrendering my life, my plans, whatever I thought I was going to do. And it's saying yes to his way. To recognizing him as Lord and Savior that says, Lord, here I am. I want to begin this path with you to discover the more. And so maybe you're in here today and you're at that point that you're ready to surrender your life to Christ to discover the more that he has for you. Or maybe you're in here this morning and listen, you've done that before, but life has life and you've gotten off the path and and you want to get back on the path by recommitting your life to him find yourself in any of the, those two places, I simply want to be an ambassador for Christ in this moment and welcome you back or for the first time to following Jesus. And can I tell you there's no shame here? He's not standing on the other end of that road pointing his finger at you saying, how could you? But he's standing on the other end of that road saying, come on home. Welcome home. Welcome back to love. Welcome to freedom. Welcome to grace. Welcome to healing. Welcome to forgiveness. So if that's you in this room this morning, whether this is a first time decision or a recommitment, if that's you, would you simply raise your hand across this place? I just want to lead you in a prayer that says, Lord, I am surrendering my life to you. I'm I'm recommitting my life to you. Amen. Amen. See your hands. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to ask this, I'm going to ask all of us to pray this prayer, but especially those of you who raised your hands this morning, can you say this? Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I repent for all I've done wrong. I believe that you died and rose again for me. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for changing me. I choose to trust you with every area of my life. And Lord, I'm ready to live in the more that you have for me. In Jesus' name. Come on, church, can we stand up? And can we give it up for everyone who made that decision today? Come on, church.